Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with cauliflower pizza crust. That's right, if you thought it was impossible to make pizza crust without flour and yeast using only cauliflower, well, you were right, it is impossible, but that's okay. While this is not anything like traditional pizza doughs, it is in its own right a very delicious thing, very nutritious, and as far as appearances goes, produces something that looks remarkably like an awesome pizza. So let me show you how to make this, and to get started, we need to prep our cauliflower. And there it is, one head of cauliflower. This one was a little on the small side, but your standard sized head of cauliflower from the grocery store should work. And to prep, all you're gonna do is cut out the core, and then simply break off those cauliflower florets and throw those into the bowl of your food processor. Although I guess we should call those cauliflowerettes. But nevertheless, we're gonna break that up into our food processor. And then, you know what's coming next. We're gonna process this until it's finely ground. And of course, as physics and tradition would dictate, you wanna start by pulsing on and off. And then you wanna continue processing that until it's very, very, very finely ground. Oh, and by the way, in the cauliflower pizza crust subculture, they actually refer to this as cauliflower rice, which I guess I can see. But since we are making pizza crust with this, I prefer cauliflower flour. But anyway, our cauliflower is prepped and it's time to dump that into some kind of saute pan or anything that will go on the stove along with a splash of water. And we're gonna put that on medium high heat and we're gonna cook that for about five or six minutes. So basically the game plan here is we need to cook this cauliflower and then squeeze out as much water liquid as possible because that's the only way you're gonna get a pizza crust made out of this stuff that's firm enough to stay together that you can actually lift up and bite like a slice. And of course, like any kind of vegetable cookery, we're gonna need enough salt. So you saw me throw in a big pinch of salt there, and I'm gonna give that a stir. And like I said, we're gonna cook that for about five or six minutes, at which point we're gonna turn off the heat and then simply let it cool. You can leave it right on the stove, but if you're in a hurry, like I always am, you could go ahead and throw that in front of an open window and it will cool a lot faster. Just watch out for bears. But anyway, let your cauliflower flour cool down and then we're gonna go ahead and transfer that into the center of a clean napkin. And raise your hand if you were gonna use a dirty napkin until you heard me say that. See, that's exactly the kind of obvious tip you do not get on the other channels. And once that's been transferred, go ahead and gather up the corners and start squeezing. And you're gonna see just a massive amount of water coming out of there. In fact, so massive, you may not wanna squeeze it on the cutting board. Let me grab the pan here, squeeze it into that. And I mean squeeze with all your might. In fact, if you have little wimpy spaghetti arms, have a friend give you a hand. You know that friend of yours that wears the half shirts? He's perfect for this. But anyway, somehow, someway, squeeze all the water out. Because as I mentioned earlier, this really is the key step. And if you do it right, you should be left with something that looks like this. And I know it doesn't look that great, but it's cauliflower. What'd you expect? So at that point, go ahead and transfer that into a mixing bowl. And we'll add the rest of the ingredients. The first of which would be some cayenne pepper. So a little shake of that. After that, we'll do some freshly and finely grated Parmigiano-Reggiano. Except no substitutes. And then we're gonna throw in a little chunk of fresh goat cheese. I know you didn't see that one coming. Along with one egg. And since we put our salt in earlier, that is gonna do it. So we're gonna take a spatula and mix that up extremely thoroughly. And you'll see, by the time you're done mixing, you should have something that looks and feels like that. And it should be very, very pressable. And you'll know for sure when you move on to the next step. So we're gonna go ahead and line a baking sheet with some parchment paper. The parchment paper is critical. I'll talk about that on the blog, but you have to have parchment paper. And then just go ahead and take your cauliflower mixture, kind of wad it up into a dough ball, and I totally did the air quotes around dough, and place that in the center of your parchment paper. And then we're gonna go ahead and press that out to about a quarter inch thick. And just some damp fingers will work, but I like to go ahead and throw a piece of plastic down and use that to help press. And once we have that pressed out into a nice, even round shape, that like I said, is about a quarter inch thick, maybe a hair thicker, maybe three eighths, that's pretty much ready. Although there is one optional step if you wanna go around the outside, around the outside, around the outside with your fingers and kind of create like a simulated pizza crust edge. Go ahead, I did it. I think it looks nicer when it's done, but suit yourself. But anyway, once your cauliflower pizza crust is shaped, it's time to bake. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw that in the center of a preheated 400 degree oven for about 40 minutes or until it looks like this. Check that out. That kind of looks like a pizza crust. And as we'll talk about later, that's kind of where the similarities end. But anyway, what we're gonna do at this point is let it cool down just a little, because what we're gonna do is go ahead and flip this over. All right, this brown side is a little firmer, a little less moist than the underside. So what we'll do is we'll just flip it over. And this is sort of the first test. If you did everything right, it should totally hold together. And at that point, you're ready to build your pizza. And I know you know how to do this, but I'm gonna show you how I did mine. I started with a little bit of our famous pizza sauce recipe, just a little, not too much. 
It's just like regular pizza. You'll wreck it if you put too much sauce. And then after my sauce, I did a little bit of red pepper flake and then some beautiful diced fresh mozzarella. You know we're not crazy about the kind you can actually grate. So try to find fresh mozzarella. Next up, I went with a few thin slices of pepperoni. Although to be honest, it wasn't really pepperoni. It was some kind of spicy artisan hipster salami, but it worked good. I'm also gonna do a little pinch of oregano. And then last but not least, a light dusting of Parmesan. And then that's ready for the oven, which by the way, I've raised to 450. All right, so as you're prepping your pizza, go ahead and turn your oven up to 450. And once your pizza has been topped to your satisfaction, we're gonna go ahead and pop that in for about 10 to 12 minutes or until it looks like this. And you gotta admit, that looks like one killer pizza pie. And yes, the edges of the crust are gonna kinda crisp up a little bit, crust up a little bit. And then just because I was concerned about moisture, I did let this cool for about five minutes on a wire rack. I think that kinda lets the bottom dry out a little bit as it cools. And then I went ahead and slid it on the cutting board. And I grabbed my trusty pizza cutter and we cut that up. And if you didn't know any better, you'd swear you were just about to bite into the most delicious pizza you've ever had. Which brings us to the key point. Make sure you know better. Because while this looks exactly like pizza, and as I pick it up, it kind of feels exactly like pizza, if you're actually gonna compare this to a wheat and yeast based pizza dough, you will be sorely, sorely disappointed. So if you're gonna serve this, this is a classic example of managing expectations. Don't tell people they're coming over for pizza, tell them they're coming over for cauliflower. And that way there's no way they'll be disappointed. Because if you think you're having cauliflower for dinner and you get this, you're pretty psyched. And of course I've been talking mostly about texture here. The taste is much closer. I mean, there is definitely a little bit of roasted cauliflower flavor in the background, but it is fairly subtle. And all in all, I think it makes a great and obviously significantly healthier delivery system for pizza toppings. So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.